Good day, I'm Clive and welcome. I'm doing a bit of a bush walk today. I've packed full of gear that I'm going to do a review of and show you guys in upcoming videos. This video is more about where we've been and where we're going with the channel. Over the last five years since I've had the YouTube going, hopefully, as somebody showing you this gear, my skills of videoing and presenting it to you have improved. My cameras have changed a bit instead of just having rock steady. Oh, I started with a mobile phone and that looked like I was. I don't know, having a seizure all the time when I was using it. It was shaking so bad. Then I changed to a, that's a cheap action camera. Not knowing what I was doing. I didn't even realize until a couple of weeks before it got damaged and I weren't able to repair it. There was electronic image stabilization on it. So, <laughs> It didn't look too good either, but it looks a little bit better. And then I upgraded to another action cam. And I began using the image stabilization, which made the videos a little bit better, a little bit steadier. And so the quality had gone up a bit. Uh, since that camera I've upgraded again and I've got another camera too so the one I'm using now has got the same it's got all the image stabilization on it's got the horizon leveling so no matter what I do with the camera it looks like it's staying level which makes a big big difference to the video quality coming out to you guys I also got another one, which is not an action camera, it's the uh, DJI Pocket 3, no Pocket 2 sorry, I wouldn't mind the Pocket 3, so that's just come out, it's a nice one, the to Pocket 2, which I've started using for my walks and doing the pan shots, just to get a lot smoother and better quality images again. So it's a little bit more, I don't know, some people said it's more dramatic because it just looks so smooth and nice. But the reason I actually bought that one was when I'm hiking. And a lot of you who follow my channel know that when I'm out on the Bibbulmun track or anywhere in the bush, I like to start walking early hours in the morning when it's still dark. So that camera, the Pocket 2, has got actual mechanical stabilization on it so we're going to get the same quality or better quality uh, videos without the cropping in and a lot less flickering and it works a little bit better in the dark rather than just an action camera so that's the camera gear and where I've come from and where I'm going to now I'd love to upgrade, well, I, I wouldn't say it's upgrading, I'd, also, I'd love to buy the DJI Action 4 camera. It lists very, well, it's going back to the old style of the Action 1 from DJI, very similar layout to it, where you can interchange the batteries, where with this one I'm using now, all I can do is add a battery module to it to prolong the life and then in the battery module when that starts to get low I can plug in uh, a charger which I've got part of the, the handle here so we've just been climbing up the hill there so we just hit a level yeah so but with the next one the action 4 all I need to do with that 
is change the battery, close it off, and that's it ready again for, I don't know, depending on what I'm using it, what uh, grade of video. I, I think they say about an hour, 40 to two hours, something, uh, recording time. And then that also means I can use that in the rain and not damage a camera. I can continue filming. I can continue with the image stabilization and the horizon level, so I'm not going to lose any of that. And it's just going to be easier. And another thing they've done with that is they've got a bigger sensor in it now, which means I can use it longer in the daytime. So as it starts to go down the light, I'll be able to film probably for another hour maybe hour and a half two depending on what time of the year it is and how quick the sun seems to go down but I'll still be carrying the pocket too now the pocket too I've been looking at all the videos about it and because it's got that one inch sensor the same as the action 4 I believe they're the same sensor. The nighttime video is going to be a lot better. It's not going to be as dark, you're going to be able to see more detail, especially walking in the bush. You'll be able to see the trees more. It just looks a lot nicer camera. So I'm hoping this year to get the Pocket 3 for the nighttime and the darker weather and the good weather and the Action 4, which I can use all year round in 90% of the video situations I use and give you a lot higher quality uh, formats like the 1080s and the 2.7 and all that stuff and give you a lot clearer shots without any shaking showing up. So that's this sixth part of it out of the way. Now the gear, I've got a load of Alton gear in the backpack and something from 3F UL gear. I'm actually heading out now today. And the main purpose of making a video about the Taji 2 from 3F UL gear, which is a two person tent. Now I've had this on my shelf for over a year and I haven't had it out yet. Uh, I think there's only... I haven't got any more that I haven't used. But I think I'm, I might have another one that I haven't used yet. I can't think of what it is. So I'm heading out to do the video about the Taji 2. I've watched these, I'm probably a couple of years behind some people that have had it for two years or a little bit more. I don't buy the tents because I haven't had them given to me everything I do a review of apart from a couple of little things I buy all my own gear I've had people approach me a company say can you do this and this is what we want you to say if there's any companies watching that and that's what you want me to do don't even offer me anything don't ask me to review any of your gear the whole idea of my channel is honest opinion and how I see it not how you see it how you want me to get people to see it it's how I actually see it and what I think of it and whether it suits me or if it's any good for me any companies out there who want an honest review of their gear yeah feel free to contact me now I said I've got this tent I've got I want I've got some older tents now ranging from 12 years old or older which I'm going to show and make a review of all of them and tell you where I like them and what I think of them but some of them aren't in production anymore so I'll let you know which ones are and which ones aren't in production but if you're looking for a second hand tent and you can find one that's been looked after in pretty good condition hopefully these reviews I'll be doing about the ones I have will give you an idea whether it's going to be right or any good for you 
it's the same I've got probably three four hammocks I've been using over the last I don't know up to 15 years and I haven't done a review of them you might have seen some of them in the background of other videos I've made so in the future I'm going to be making videos of those and some of them are I believe still in production so they are out there to get from new but there's also a lot where people want to sell theirs because they've upgraded to something else or they're not using it anymore because something's happened or all that sort of thing so that will give you an idea of the older stuff I'm trying to think what, what else I've got yeah I've got all little things, little stoves still to show you which over the years I've used and I think there's only two of them out of all the stoves I've got that I haven't used in the last three years I think some of them but all the rest I've used with different heights in different situations different times of the year it's a simple thing, it's like gas stoves they're great for the mild conditions you know, like when it's fairly warm, it's not so cold when you get into the winter and you've got all the snow and the ice and that gas cylinders don't seem to work as well they're a bugger to keep going because they lose all the pressure where if you use alcohol stoves or little solid fuel stoves uh, where you put the fuel tabs in there they're great for the winter and that's how I've been using uh, my gear uh, I'll, I'll do comparisons where some companies have made something which is the same as another company's uh, it's like some of the, the tents some of the tents I've done a review of uh, a few months ago other companies are actually making in tents but again, the company that I've got, they basically copied another company's with a few little tweaks. So, a lot of them just look at, how can I put it? What the reviews are saying, if someone's saying we've got tatty bits here, tatty bits there, loose thread here, water came through here, basically that means the company's done the copy uh, normally haven't used as good a quality material for waterproofing on them so they're, they're still worth having a look at there's some of the gear I've got which I've let's say, copied from other companies which actually are better than the originals and with time and progress materials get better and they get cheaper and these other companies are able to put out gear um, a reasonable price. You know what else? Yeah. So where I'm walking at the moment, we had storms come through, and they've closed all, or not all, 99% of the car park area off. They've closed a lot of the actual four-wheel drive tracks off. And just getting to this point where I am now, which is only about a kilometre into the walk, from the one point. Yeah, about 1.2, because I can see the track I've got to cross over. <coughs> A lot of fall, fallen trees, the roots have been pulled up, branches snapped and fallen across the track. I think I've had to climb over about four so far. But the further away I get from down there, it seems there's not as much damage, so I don't think the storm, which I didn't even know happened until I got here. Uh, I didn't know the storm had come through. People had said, oh, did you hear the thunder and the lightning and everything the other night? And I said, no. <laughs> so we must have been lucky and we must have just bypassed us. Yeah, so in the future we'll be looking at, I've got more tents to show, shelters. It's like in the back here, I've got a, a tarp there. I've got a hammock in there. I've got a hammock bug net in there. Uh, I think I've got another ground sheet in there. I've got a uh, and what would, we, what would we call it? Another bug net which connects to one of the ground sheets. 
and uh, makes up a set so if you want to keep away from the bugs but you don't want to be closed in oh, yeah, I'm trying to think what else is in there yeah I'm actually using the uh, more cans bowl uh, knife today so I'll be making a review of that soon I've been using it now for I don't know, 12 18 months on and off and I'll let you know about what I think to that one and the circumstances and situations that I would use that one I invested actually in an ice knife from TBS. Now I'll show you that one because I bought that as my main knife. I've been looking at it for a while and arming and arming for it and I thought bugger it. I sold some of my gear that I hadn't used for a long time and I bought it. So that's sitting in my drawer, I get it out every now and then. I do just simple stuff at home with it in the backyard or in the office if I need to cut some power cord when I'm doing something. I'll even use it to cut tape. So I'll be showing you that and the setup I bought for it. And it's something to look forward to, I think. Now yeah, I was excited and I'm really happy to have bought it. Uh, last, well it's in October, I had to go in for triple surgery, no, nothing serious, some just parts that were uncomfortable, put it that way. I had to have three sebaceous cysts removed. Now the smallest one was right on my neck here, just below the collar line, which is where the sh any shoulder stops, if it does pull, that's where it was pulling. But it was actually forcing onto the jugular vein and now it's about the size of a golf ball so that one had to come out and it's where are we now we're at the end of january and i've only just been able to put any uh, serious weight or potential weight on my shoulders with the pack with the shoulder straps so that was throughout last year and the year before slowly growing and then making it difficult to do what I love doing which is getting out brush and walking and then I had another one on my inner thigh and it was right up by the crease of my groin and that I'd had trouble with before that got infected and they drained it all out all that stuff but this time it hadn't infected and I thought no I've got to get this out before anything like that happens and that one was about the size of a tennis ball or just a little bit bigger so if you see me walking up to about four three four months ago and i was walking a bit funny that's why but that came out and the actual incision on that one was about five and a half six inches around the top of my thigh now that hasn't healed 100 percent that still gives a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a repair bit, I'd say the scab. Only a tiny bit, but that's at one end. But now I'm able to walk a lot more comfortable now that one's gone. Now the other one I had, which was giving me trouble, sat a bit and the nape on my neck just between my shoulder blades and when that wasn't playing up that was about the size again I'd probably a golf ball or doing a golf ball squash ball sort of size but that one kept getting infected for some reason and it ended up about six inches across two and a half inches high by about an inch and a half two inches deep and that was full of yuck so Three weeks of antibiotics, get that down to a point, and they did surgery and took that one out too. So that was all three they did at the same time. 
and that prevented me doing something I've been training for about four months, five months on. But that one on the, my neck at the back, they took the stitches out, everything seemed good. That night it ripped open, got slightly infected, so I had another five or six weeks then packing it and waiting for it to heal. And that is still a bit tender now, but I'm able to get the pack on. So there wasn't that many videos coming out <coughs> uh, from about midway to the end of last year where it was actually out in the bush doing sections on the Birmingham track. So hopefully I'll be able to start getting out more and more and hopefully get back down because I've made it halfway down the Birmingham track down to Donnelly River Village and I'll be able to continue from there the other half to Pemberton, uh, not Pemberton, to Albany and the next section from Donnelly is Pemberton so then Northcliffe, then on and on and on now I want to get the section between Pemberton and Northcliffe done before the really wet season because there's sections of that one where on the plains the water is some people have had it around waist height, others said it's up to about their chest if they've had it. So I'd rather get there before all that happens and have it fairly dry or even if it's a bit wet I don't mind. A decent pair of boots I've got at the moment. So that, that was something to let's have a look about four, hey, they're five or six inches deep. And my keep my feet dry. Yeah, I Apart from the camera gear, I think I've got so much on the, shelf, on the shelves at home that I don't have to buy anything else for at least another 12, 18 months to make a review of. And what I am also thinking of doing is a few years back I bought a small trailer, then I bought a camper tent to go on top of it, and I did odds and sods and bits to it, and that hasn't been used for three or four years now so I know there's bits that need to be done to that so I'm thinking I'll start making some videos of actually uh, repairing the camper and getting it up to spec again so it's nice clean waterproof replace some tie out points on it and show how I've done it and what I've used to do the repairs with and give you a rough idea how long it took me now this will just be a, uh, I'm not professional at any of it, this is just handyman, I'll say where uh, I'll have a look at it, see the best way I can do it and I'll do it and I'll show you how I do it. I've also got another tent but that's um, a large canvas tent a couple of add-ons to it and, and I'll show you I'll, I'll do a video about that so people have got an idea because a few people have actually asked me when I've been using it so I use it as a base tent for their base camp I'll find a camp pitch campsite somewhere they've got all the amenities and then I'll go bush walking around that area exploring uh, walking new trails and tracks I do so I'll work the way through from the ground sheet all the way up to through the tent, the flies uh, and what I use in that tent. Now that's a, that's a pretty good one. It's known as a 30 second tent so once it's out of the bag from being on the floor to being up where you can actually use it without putting the four pegs in it's in less, less than 30 seconds. So it's, it's not a hiking one. I guess it goes on the roof of the, the four wheel drive I've got. But that's a nice tent, I've used that a few times. Actually that's what got me into making videos. I had the smaller version, the, uh, the four person version. And I sold that with all the attachments, all the gear. Because everything you get for the four person, or most of what you get for the four person will only fit the four person. And I wanted the next size up just for that little bit more room for putting stuff in the store. And so I went up to the five person one. And as I was showing the people buying that, telling them about it, the, I think his, his wife said, uh, 
do work for this company. If you know so much about it, you've got some good ideas. And I said, no, no. And she says, well, what you should do is do YouTube and do reviews of gear and walking. And that's how I actually started doing the YouTube because I sold an item of gear or a setup and I was told I should do it. So here we go. This is where I am five years later nearly. Now, if you've got any suggestions of things I could review or situations to use the gear I've got, keeping in mind I won't do anything stupid and dangerous. I don't mind testing. If a tent is made for three seasons only, I won't be going out in crazy winds like not pull the trees down back there. But I will use it through the three seasons it was uh, designed for, or what they say you could use it for. I've been watching some people in the UK at the moment going out in minus two, minus five degrees centigrade using three season equipment <coughs> and then having to bail out and go home. It might be entertaining, but a bit daft, let's say. I've been in a situation where I was prepared, I followed all the forecasts, and the actual forecast was totally messed up, it wasn't right, it was about 10 degrees centigrade out, so I ended up uh, collapsing the dehydration and getting chopped out. Uh, in that situation, that's different. But putting myself in a situation where it's uh, dangerous, dangerous with no backup. That's a no-no. Any other ideas you've got? Places you think I could camp? Uh, what you'd like me to show you using the knowledge I have? There's millions of people with a lot more knowledge in me in different ways. If I can do it, I will. Whether it's any uh, basic survival, basic bushcraft, uh, simple hiking, uh, still some gear that you've seen me use and I haven't used for a while and you want me to bring back out the cupboard if I've still got it and I'll, I'll do all that sort of thing where I can. So I'm nearly down at the shelter where I'm heading with all the gear on my pack to make some videos for you guys. So I look forward to you following along. Next well, next video will be up tomorrow from making this now. So that'll probably be Yep, all the ones in the back will be put up over the next three, four, maybe five months because there's so much in the pack and other stuff I've got at home. So have fun and take care. <laughs>